Uh, let's bring in our friend Michael Osterholm. He's director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Dr. Osterholm, welcome back. We're delighted to have you with us. Thanks, Tyler. As you look at these, you. as you look at these cases, uh, fantastic to have you with us. Uh, as you look at the cases involving Hope Hicks, uh, the first lady, and the president, and apparently a couple of other people who are associated either with journalists in the White House or with the White House press office, when is the best estimate as to when they might have been exposed to the virus in the first place? Yeah, well, I think this has been a, a somewhat of a confusing story today, and and unfortunately, uh, some of the people who are most at risk of being infected have confused it more. I think if you look at the president, the first lady, who we obviously give them our, our best wishes, uh, you look at Hope Hicks, and you look at the several others now that appear to be positive, I think this was probably uh, tied to a common event, or at least maybe two common events, that occurred probably sometime at the end of last week. Uh, it normally it takes anywhere from four to six days from the time someone's exposed to actually start showing symptoms. Unfortunately, they can actually be infectious several days before that. So this is one where I think that group is is clearly in that category of time. The second group that I think we need to be worried about are those who are now exposed to the president, the first lady, Hope Hicks, and all the others who are part of that original group. Those individuals could have been exposed as early as Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, putting it right at the time of the uh, debates. And unfortunately, in a room like that, given the number of people that might have been infected in that room, uh, you know, the idea of six feet it was more than sufficient to protect you is likely out the window and that that room could actually be a very important place for another event to occur. Let, let, me, let me make sure I'm understanding you, and, and I think I am. The chances are that the initial exposure of the president and the first lady, uh, Ann Hope Hicks, took place probably toward the end of last week. At the top of the hour, Shep Smith reported uh, that uh, not only were those folks at, but also the president of Notre Dame was at the announcement of uh, Judge Barrett uh, appointing to the Supreme Court, and the president of Notre Dame has turned up positive. So then let's turn to the idea of how long it would take for someone who has been exposed, for example, at the debate, to remain asymptomatic and feel as though they were out of the woods. If I've been exposed to someone who has it, president or my next door neighbor, how long until I know I'm okay? Well, as you just heard from Meg, who did a very nice uh, overview of that, once you're exposed, it really is up to 14 days before you might actually show signs or mm -hmm. symptoms or be positive. Now, the most of the people will be uh, showing signs of illness if they're going to get ill and be positive by testing at seven or eight days. But the bottom line message is today, all the people who said that they were at the debate or at the rally here in Minnesota uh, or at a fundraiser here in Minnesota this week, None of those tests really are that meaningful to me yet by saying they're negative. These are individuals that could surely turn up positive over the next several days from that exposure this week. And I think that's what uh, we really need to look at as what I call the second order contacts. Well, Dr. Osterholm, it's, it's Meg Terrell here. Uh, you know, can uh, people test negative but be contagious? Uh, yes, Meg, and that's, again, we get back to the testing. You know, I have, as you know, been a fairly vocal public critic of the White House testing program using the antigen test as they were using it because, in fact, it uh, is so uh, insensitive. Up to half of the people who are infected could test negative by that test. I've likened it to giving the Secret Service squirt guns and trying to protect the president against an assassin. So uh, this was not a surprise, actually, what happened here. And so people could test negative if they use the antigen test and be infectious for certain. But even with the PCR test, the more reliable test, we know that uh, the infectiousness begins to come up at, to a level of great concern when the PCR is positive. But so far, I'm not aware that we're seeing any of the PCR positive tests. We're still really talking about these antigen tests, which again, just have this notable unreliability uh, in terms of picking up infections. Yeah, and we heard this morning from Corey Lewandowski, a former Trump campaign manager who said he was tested at the White House over the weekend on Saturday with the Abbott test. Now, Abbott has a new test called the Binax Now, which is an antigen test, but it also has an older test called the ID Now, which is a PCR test. But even though that's a 
quote unquote molecular test, you know, that's more of a gold standard, that one still uh, doesn't have the sensitivity that you'd want either. I mean, how, why would they keep using these tests uh, even since May when well, we, I, we learned that there is a risk of false negatives? You know, I don't know, Meg. I've said over and over again, I think that this has been a big mistake. Uh, just to give you an idea, in the very same test, uh, but for influenza, also made by Abbott, there's actually recommendations on the CDC website not to use the tests for influenza because they're so notably unreliable. And I can tell you from clinical experience right now where people have been using the new Abbott test and the old Abbott test, this very high level of false negatives or not picking up somebody infected when they really are infected is a real challenge. So again, I don't know why this test has been used. We argue strongly that we need a whole new approach to protecting our leaders in this country and those that we must bubble so that they don't get infected. So I think right now we're going to see this unfold for the next seven to 10 days. Don't be surprised by more October surprises. I think they're going to happen. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.